Hi. So one of the things you'll find building robots doing electronics is not every project goes to plan. Talking with one of my viewers, Twitter handle at Hugh Phillips, uh, I had a rather awesome plan on using a light strip, an LED light strip, a bit like this one, with the servo motor. Now what he'd asked was, could he connect 50 PWM based solenoids or other PWM devices such as a servo motor to one Arduino or similar microcontroller. And so what I considered doing was using one of these light strips where you have RGB LEDs controlled by two pins if it's the SPI bus type and if you can get one of the ones where it's actually the LED is separate from the control chips then you may be able to get a PWM signal from the control chip. So I discussed the idea with him and we were getting a little bit excited at well perhaps you know six LEDs with three PWM outputs can control 18 servos. So I was going to build an 18 servo beast of a robot and I still will but in another video However, I, after experimentation and some theory and lots of fiddliness, worked out that this is not going to work. So let's go into what I did, how I did it, and why I now know it will not work. Let's plug this in and start to get some uh, oscilloscope readings for it. The WS2801 can actually be dealt with as if it was an SPI device. So here is an example of it plugged in to a Raspberry Pi like an SPI device. And then there's a quick reference here for a software SPI bus. Here is a typical WS2801 strip. And uh, what you've got here on every one of these segments, chip here has got PWM outputs, which are gonna be controlling probably the current across this LED here, and then passing whatever data it's not taken along. So you've got some current limiting resistors. It's either the pins on this or the pads on here that we need to attach something to. Here I have uh, the Node MCU board and I've wired it up to the strip. So here I'm actually using D1 and D2 as my SPI outputs. And I've got a ground, so they have a shared ground. And you can see the one light here, just to show this doing something. So SPI write can be used to write bytes. And this is, if I do red, we get red, blue, then we get green. So it's not quite the way up I think it should be. Now, I did a bit of probing around earlier, turning on individual lights to see where the signal was coming out of. And so it's interesting because it's BBRRGG. And they're actually not common cathode or common anode, which uh, surprised me. I thought that was the way the chip would be designed. Oh, and sorry about this. This must be just rolling shutter because you can't see this flickering with the naked eye. So I guess the next step, really, now I've got those, is to work out how I might be able to solder the servo outputs onto one of these and hopefully I won't destroy the whole strip trying but this strip was designed, bought specifically just for this purpose so <laughs> I'm not too wary it's just the fact that it obviously that soldering trick a servo motors signal into this might be quite hard I'll say now this was the fiddliest job I've ever tried to do with a soldering iron get just one and I tried to attach three and two kept falling off attached to one leg of one of those LEDs reliably was a great deal of effort. Now, perhaps for someone who's more experienced with soldering very, very fine wires on very, very fine pads, they might have done that sooner or faster than I could. But that was the first point where I was like, wait a minute, there is a big cost element here. And this is just soldering one piece of wire to one of those potential outputs. Before I actually go and try and you do something wacky with the servo, like connecting it to one of those uh, LED strips, I needed to test that I had a working servo and that I could just make it work using MicroPython. And I'm using this uh, direct servo, with, uh, I'll link to that below in the description. And from here I'm importing the pin, creating a servo around pin 14. You might find this diagram handy to see what the uh, pins are. D5 GPIO 14. So if I now go and send this to the ESP, and we can see it going to angle 80, 40, 100. So we can see that the server has a nice full range of motion here. 
the next stage is to actually connect the light strip but of course where this was supposed to get really interesting is if I now take this output here and then connect that to this servo pin so we know the servo works we know the lights work okay and currently we're sending zero to that servo if I now write say 60 60 60 we do not see any servo movement at all uh, that connecting across to what is the signal pin of our servo motor and it's not doing a thing I guess we now need to go and explore why this is not getting this to move this connection is all good we'll just I'll tell you what let's just verify that so we've got a multimeter in continuity mode and if I go from the pin on the LED there to here yep there it is there is continuity between here and here and okay we can do this last leg here just to make sure we're good there yep the signal is getting from this LED to the motor now I realize it's been being PWM this is the lowest setting so let's put this whack this right up to 255 which is going to be basically just on there we are so it's on its fullest and we'll go to 20 volts and we should be able to get ourselves uh, a ground somewhere there's one here at the end of this just to make sure we're playing right we're going to be able to see the usb voltage here 4.68 this pwm signal is at 2.73 volts well that's below a logic level and that is 255 which is basically just on so that's not really quite enough to trigger a logic transition I mean 3 volts might be enough 3.3 .3 volts even better 2.7 yeah we have a problem here and we might actually need a transistor in the way to make it actually trigger say the 3 or 5 or whatever volts are needed to actually signal this motor properly and what this is doing it's simply sending uh, a sweeping lights on lights off type thing only for the first light in the sequence I'm going to do spi.write bytes 0 times or say 300 clear everything and now if I call my sweep function 0 0.01 now it's sweeping up to 255 and down but what that should give me is seeing the PWM range you can see that glowing a bit more slowly and all the way off so if we take this and make sure we are triggering this way up almost off but not completely we then send our sweep again ah there it is nice and clear you can see a PWM sweep as it reaches the extreme it uh, loses its triggering and goes a bit wild but that looks great until you realize and this was what I didn't spot the first time when I saw that lovely clean PWM signal I thought I'm home and dry I'll be able to drive a servo off this. but no here we're at two volts per graduation so that's two four and a half volts now this is actually grounded to the ground that is shared by the stepper motor by the sp the light strip and if i take the light strips power i can perhaps go and see what that looks like which is up here somewhere a little bit noisy this however all the way through that pwm i am at about 2.3 4.5 volts so this is never going down to zero these are not logic transitions now i probed around the led to see if there were any places where you got such a transition uh, they're all similar to this now there is a voltage drop across the led it's never actually at the right one to actually trigger the servo let's just prove this by going the other side here so here's the other side of the uh, led wait a minute so there it is but that is according to graduation about 2.3 volts not enough I could use a transistor per channel. This is now beyond the realm of being economically worth doing. But let's at least demonstrate that the theory that it'll work if I have a transistor has some merit. So I've taken the ends of my uh, motor and uh, splayed them out so I can go and stick them to a breadboard where I've got a transistor and we'll connect the base to the output of our LED. Servo connecting here. That 
fly cable is still too small to poke in a breadboard, so I guess I'm going to go with the same trick. And now if I turn all this on again, so we're still connected to the light. We need to make sure that these two connections for the ground and voltage, blue here is voltage, are connected up to our breadboard so it's powered. I've got an LED so it just lights so I can see what's also going on on that channel. Where I've soldered the cable onto my light, I've actually soldered it onto what is positive terminal on the light, although it showed a ripple that would probably be expected. But there is a set of resistors here and this is resistor down to the anode of the LED. The cathode is actually what's being driven by the chip here, so it's actually sinking current from the cathode through to ground. So it was this side I needed to connect to. I've switched out one of these crocs, because this is a handy adaptable cable, for a, uh, a pointy terminal, and therefore I can try and get it down here. First thing you can hear is that servo is actually making a chattering noise. And if I send zero to it that's pretty unhealthy noise for a servo but it's showing it's really doing something and it may be the frequency of the PWM is a little bit too much for this servo or it may be that I need to adapt my numbers in some other way so I'm still yet to determine what are reasonable values here but this is looking slightly more promising than it did before Part of my suspicion here, from the high frequency noises we get from this, is that this is also driven as a constant current device. That means there are going to be other high frequency oscillations that may be affecting this to try and maintain the current on this LED. Well, actually the LED and this signal line too. The LPD 8806 and 8803 that were proposed by uh, the original viewer, that's going to have exactly the same problem because it has exactly the same or very similar datasheet to the WS2801. So even with the additional transistor and the extra work, because of the high frequencies and the free running PWM oscillator here, this is not going to be able to drive a servo motor. But if I went to go and do that, and I went and soldered a cable on each, with a transistor on each of those. So I've now got a resistor and a transistor per channel, plus the LED strip that I've used, plus the amount of time it takes to solder each of those on, which I found is no small feat. And I've realized this is economically completely unviable. Um, so that's why I'm saying this project really wouldn't work. Probing around on the pins on the chip gives it actually the same as probing around on the pins of the LED. They're just easier to short because they're even smaller. I knew from actually connecting the servos it was not going to work at all. So my actual answer is this. This is an Adafruit 16 channel 12 bit PWM servo controller. Now I'm not saying you have to buy the Adafruit brand, you can buy any brand you like, but it's a 16 channel controller. Cost about 20 quid, which is about the same as this strip. Now I've still got to solder these headers on there, which are made easier by being in uh, sets of two by threes. That's kind of nice, it's got its own power supply. And I'm gonna be using this to build the robot that I would have built using this design here. So I recommend not using this strategy and uh, certainly if you want to try and repeat my experiment using a different strip or changing some of the experimental conditions let me know post a video I'll link to it um, I'm sure there may have been things I've missed and gotten wrong so the other reason I'm going to publish this is because I will publish some of my failed experiments a to show sometimes things go wrong and b because I think there's value to the community in knowing what I've tried that didn't work so we can learn from each other this is worth trying uh, I've been here and these are what I think of the pitfalls and again you know someone may have an idea of something I've missed here I will leave a link below first uh, with some ideas of the code and some basics on what the circuit was that I've set up I'll also leave a link below for translating and transcribing this so people who are hard of hearing or speaking other languages can get transcripts of my videos sometimes it's nice actually just to go and quickly peruse through the text of a video as well um, some people just approach it that way if you've liked this please give it a thumbs up uh, I'd love to see comments below and subscribe for more electronics more ESP8266 robotics, hacky electronics ideas, and uh, go make stuff and be awesome. Bye!